let us begin today's session with a few prayers. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna and welcome all of you for this special session dedicated to our beloved spiritual master, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Based on his teachings, we have been discussing the 20 items of knowledge described by Lord Krishna in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And we have discussed 13 items so far. And today we are discussing, discussing the 14th item of knowledge that is today's topic is subliminal seclusion so what is this subliminal seclusion so one of the general things that we hear about spirituality is that generally spiritualists would like to seclude themselves from the general mass of people it has been a norm in our country Especially, we see a lot of people uh, giving up their family ties and going to sacred places, to Himalayas, and there they sit down and perform their meditation. We have heard many such uh, uh, such instances. So, Lord Krishna says that this kind of a seclusion is actually a sign of knowledge. Now, what exactly is this seclusion and how practical is it for us to practice this today in today's lifestyle? How can we practice this? And practically, some useful tips on how to practice this. Of course, we're not going to talk about giving up everything and going to Himalayas or some sacred place, but being in our place, how we can uh, practice this. Uh, item of knowledge is what we're going to study or understand in today's session. Let's begin. So, first, let us see the definition. The Sanskrit word used uh, in this connection is Abhinishwangaha. Can we display? Yes. The first slide, please. Abhinishwangaha. What is the meaning of this? Disassociation from the materialistic minded people. Anabhishvangaha. Disassociation from the materialistic minded. So, just like if you are a businessman, you would always like to be with a businessman or you seek the association of similar business minded people so that you can uh, get to learn their way of uh, doing a business and from that you can benefit isn't it in the same way a spiritualist is advised to not only associate with more and more spiritually minded people but also to disassociate from the people who are too materialistic or those who are not um, uh, those who are not interested in spiritual way of life Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport in 14.27 Bhagavad Gita. In his constitutional position, a living entity is above the three modes of material nature, but association with material nature entangles him in the different modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Due to the association of these three modes, his desire to dominate the material world is there. So, Karanam Gunasangasya Sadasad Janma Yonishu. Lord Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita. Association with the modes, the material modes, 
goodness, passion and ignorance actually leads to materialistic existence, materialistic way of life. So when we associate with people who are too materialistic, who are under the influence of the three modes, uh, of course, we are also under the influence of the three modes currently. But under the influence of the three modes, we actually become entangled to a materialistic worldview. So uh, it is recommended that those who want to make spiritual advancement must practice this uh, to give up the association of worldly minded people. So uh, let us try to understand more what does it actually mean and how it's going to affect us and how to practice it. So once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked a similar question, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also says like that when he was asked by one grihastha bhakta what is the duty of a vaishnava chaitanya mahaprabhu immediately said asat sanga tyago e vaishnava achar a vaishnava means he must give up the association of non devotees then the question will be who is non devotee asat stri sangi krishna bhakta one who is too much attached to material enjoyment, stri sangi is a basic point, and one who is not a devotee of Krishna, he is asat sangha. So the point is, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying the prime duty of a devotee is to not only seek satsanga or the devotees of, I mean, association of devotees, but a devotee should also withdraw himself from associating with non devotees asat sanga tyaga has to give up and then who is such an asat sanga who is a non devotee that is elaborated a person who is too attached to material sense gratification here it is mentioned stri sanghi it is also purusha sanghi i mean for a man it is woman a person who is too attached to the opposite gender, he is said to be Asat Sangha. Association of such people is Asat Sangha. That means those who are too much into material sense enjoyment, such people's association must be given up. And also, Krishna Abhakta, one who is not a devotee, his association is also Asat Sangha, and we have to give up such association. And that is a duty of a Vaishnava, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said. Now, why is this mentioned by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Why is it said by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and also by Lord Krishna that we have to give up the Asat Sangha or attachment to association with materialistic people? So let us see some case studies which will help us understand what happens when we associate with materialistic minded people let's move forward yes pitfalls of bad association the first one is ajamila we all know about this famous story of ajamila mentioned in the sixth canto of Srimad bhagavatam ajamila was actually born in a very religious family he was a he was born in a traditional brahman family and he was brought up uh, with spiritual values and ajamila he would actually engage himself in worshiping the deity of narayana and saligrama shila at his house every day uh, very determined he was he was culturing all good qualities one day it so happened that he went to a forest as usual to collect some flowers for his worship and on the way in the forest he saw a man and a woman who are almost uh, undressed or half naked they were actually uh, together enjoying together and when ajamila saw this he was actually uh, bewildered 
and he became agitated in his mind and seeing the beauty of that woman he also desired her association so what he did was he seeked the association of that woman even though he was a married man he had children so he actually uh, became mad after that woman and uh, he became addicted to her uh, uh, i mean to that relationship and just to satisfy that woman he uh, sent away his old parents his wife and children from his house and he started uh, satisfying all the desires of that woman he literally became a puppet in the hands of that woman and uh, he would start earning money in uh, through illegal means uh, just to satisfy the desires of that woman so here is an example what can asat sangha cause to us so asat sangha we see here ajamila became connected because of his association with that woman of loose character so he actually gave up his uh, spiritual activities so one possible pitfall of associating with materialistic people is that one's determination to progress on the path of spiritual life spirituality uh, will go down determination will go down and uh, this is especially the case uh, because uh, of his uncontrolled lust ajamila did not mind sending away his old parents from his house he did not mind sending away his chaste wife and children out of the house kama turanam na bhayam na lajja it is said a person who is under the influence of kama lust uh, he will forget all uh, good qualities he will not have any shame so this is what happens when we uh, you know are in the association of materialistic people so this is vividly described in the history of ajamila uh, in shrimad bhagavatam so it is a lesson for us uh, now here you might say that oh why it is specifically talked about women now the same is the case for uh, men also it is the other it is both sides okay so uh, for a man woman looks like a object of enjoyment and for a woman man looks like an object of enjoyment so both uh, both ways it is possible so therefore uh, this is an example where a person lost spiritual path due to his illicit connection with a woman and this is an example of a pitfall of asat sangha or materialistic association let us see the second example the second example mentioned in the shrimad bhagavatam fifth canto is that of maharaj bharat maharaj bharat uh, was the emperor of the whole world and uh, he was actually very determined to attain spiritual perfection so uh, he gave up his entire kingdom he gave it in charge uh, to his sons and he left the kingdom went to the forest in order to sit down and lead a simple life and do tapasya in the forest but then one day he came across a baby deer and he became very attached to the baby deer and because of his uh, attachment to the deer he actually uh, lost interest in his spiritual practices uh, even though he would sit down to do meditation uh, his mind would give, would be disturbed by the thoughts of the deer if the deer would not return back to his hermitage after a long time then he would actually become very anxious he would not be able to pay attention in his meditation now then he actually uh, died even when he was dying he remembered the deer and because of which next life 
he had to become a deer so this is an example given in the bhagavatam again to warn us that undue attachment can cause uh, havoc in our spiritual life especially for those who want to make spiritual advancement make the best use of human form of life one must be very careful not to fall into the trap of uh, unnecessary attachment so bharat maharaja's attachment to a deer costed him three lives he could have actually attained perfection in that one single life and go back to godhead but because of this attachment to the deer he had to uh, accept two more lives before he attained perfection so even such a great personality as bharat maharaj who was so determined that he gave up his entire kingdom and went to the forest he became a victim of uh, material association then what to speak of common people like us so we must take lessons from these two case studies uh, not to uh, become a victim of Uh, unwanted material association now let's move forward we saw what are the ill effects of asatpanga now somebody may question how practical it is in today's world not that we always get to meet devotees during our discharge of our daily activities invariably we have to interact with lot of people who are materialistic who are not spiritually inclined we may have to uh, carry on our dealings with such people also so like bharat maharaj did is it possible for us to give up everything and go to the forest no it is not practical for us today then uh, should we give up asat sangha altogether if yes how so let us now explore this part so here are a few things that we could practice the first one is practice the principle called as much as required when we have to deal with people around us who are materialistic who are not spiritually minded so our we have to restrict our activities our talk association with them using this principle as much as required how much is required for my dealing with such person i should restrict my action my talk with them only to that much for example in your office in your workplace if you have to deal with non devotees so you only deal for the sake of the work which you have to do with that person as much as required only we talk as much as required we interact so this is a way we can save ourselves from asat sangha right so we have to clearly be it should be very clear to us okay for the sake of this particular activity i have to talk with this person and there ends my connection there ends my association with such person so we have to be careful in this connection there is one nice panchatantra story monkey and the crocodile so there was a monkey on a tree on the banks of a river and in that river there was a crocodile family also living husband and wife crocodile now monkey was living on a jamun tree you know it was producing very sweet jamun fruits it would eat this jamun fruits one day this crocodile came and said i also want to taste this jamun fruits so the monkey started throwing the jamun fruits and crocodile would start eating it like this a friendship developed between the monkey and the crocodile many days every day the crocodile would come to the banks of the river and monkey would ha- have a nice time sharing the fruits with the crocodile so this was happening for many days and sometimes the monkey the crocodile would also carry some fruits in its mouth and give it to his wife who was on the other side of the river and the wife was also very happy to receive and he would say that i got this from the monkey friend one day this 
female crocodile the wife crocodile got a desire so you talk so much about the monkey i actually have a desire i want to eat the heart of that monkey i have heard that monkey's heart it is it will be very tender very 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 uh, tasty i want to eat it can you please satisfy my desire so the crocodile was thinking it's not good to take undue advantage of this monkey who is my friend he has so much trust on me how can i break the trust but still the wife was very demanding she was hell bent no you have to get i want this monkey's heart so somehow uh, with half heart the crocodile as usual came to the bank of the river and it was little upset so the friend the monkey asked what happened today you are not in a good mood so the crocodile said uh, actually my wife wants to see you uh, my wife has a desire that she is eating the fruits that you are sending every day she wants to see you and talk to you then uh, she said okay you bring your wife here i'll talk then uh, he said no my wife doesn't want to come this side she is on the other side of the bank other side of the river if you can come i will take you there so with all good intention uh, you know the monkey did not have a doubt on the crocodile so monkey said fine i'll sit on your back you take take me to the other side of the river so on the way almost in the center of the river the crocodile started talking the crocodile thought now the monkey is now caught monkey is in between the river it will not be able to escape now so the crocodile said you know why i am taking you my wife wants to eat your heart the flesh of your heart that's why i'm taking you so then the monkey started became very afraid oh i'm going to meet my death now so it thought for a while and said oh my dear crocodile see if you had told me this before only i would have not kept my heart in the tree see because heart is very precious so in so that i always keep the heart safely in the tree but if you if you didn't tell me that your wife wants to eat my heart i would have brought it along with me if you had told me told this before so now you please return back immediately let me take the heart and we'll go and meet your wife so the foolish crocodile you know really it was foolish so it took the heart, it took the monkey back and the monkey safely jumped into the tree and said never ever show your face to me again like this now the moral of the story is of course the monkey's intelligence is the highlight of the story but as we are you know as it is relevant to this principle that we are talking about interact with materialistic people as much as required only too much is too bad now because monkey had a close relationship with the crocodile you know crocodile wanted to misuse that relationship so like the monkey we also need to be intelligent and uh, we should know when to withdraw and also just like the monkey had a safe shelter on the tree uh, for us the devotees in krishna consciousness the safe shelter is association of devotees when we are in the association of devotees we are actually safe because in the association of devotees we get to hear about krishna more and more we get to do devotional service to krishna and that keeps us away from material contamination so that is what is very important practice the principle as much as required only okay let's see the next uh, next thing that we can do uh this is also interesting analogy given in the bhagavad gita by lord krishna himself learn from the tortoise withdraw when to withdraw yourself tortoise teaches us a very big life lesson the moment tortoise sees any threat any danger immediately it withdraws its limbs and head into the shell isn't it now the lesson that we learned from this is uh we have to know that there is a possibility of 
getting influenced getting affected by bad association therefore where to stop my talk where to stop my interaction that we have to decide for ourselves and we have to withdraw ourselves beyond that limit i will not go this is very important while we are dealing with those who are not spiritually inclined and uh, out of necessity we may be dealing as i mentioned so that time we have to learn remember this thought is yeah this is this is this much is okay for me for interacting uh, beyond this let me withdraw myself let me avoid let me abstain abstinence is a very uh, important thing that we need to uh, follow right that is what we learn from the tortoise now the third uh, next thing let we have to maintain good consciousness invariably you know there is one nice story i'll tell you before i talk about this there was a king and this king was told by his personal astrologer that my dear king uh, green is your lucky color okay make sure that you you only see green colored objects okay now this king you know he was believing this astrologer so what he and using his you know his position as a king you know what he did he made sure that in his entire kingdom all houses are painted green he made sure that he passed a rule that everybody in his kingdom should wear green clothes only so you know everything he got it converted into green color painted into green color so that whenever he would go out he would always see green color then he came across one saintly person who happened to visit that uh, that kingdom and the saintly person was surprised oh everything is green in this uh, kingdom what's the matter then he came to know about this king's order and then he came to meet the king and he told one interesting thing to the king which was actually like something very striking so the king the the saintly person said my dear king very nice that you're you want to only see your lucky color green but why are you imposing your greenery into everybody simple thing that you could have done is just wear a green color specks and then everything that you see will be green now this is a very uh, nice story and a very important moral for us to derive from this rather than expecting the whole world should be you know very nice great instead of that first we work on ourselves we maintain good consciousness if we do good sadhana every day by chanting hari krishna mantra by reading bhagavad gita by listening to bhagavatam maintain a good level of krishna consciousness then we can be insulated or we can be unharmed by the external things instead of blaming the external world or instead of trying to change the external world of course uh, we must also try to share the knowledge of krishna consciousness with anybody who is interested to know but uh, that can also happen only when we have good consciousness so charity begins at home first we need to work on our consciousness and then we will be able to help others also and we will also not get affected by others when we are interacting with them out of necessity right okay let's move forward what is the next thing that we can do krishna is your conversations with others whenever feasible now instead of avoiding talking with people oh they are not devotees they are not spiritualists so asat sanga tyaga chaitanya mahaprabhu has said i should give up their association now instead of doing that a more intelligent approach would be when you talk to people 
somehow or the other in between try to say something that you re read from the bhagavad gita just one line one sentence you could just share with them in that way you are actually spiritualizing your conversation isn't it you are talking to people around you your friends your colleagues people around you with whom you are you are interacting every day instead of you know just having a normal talk so why don't you also talk something which you learned from the gita in one or two sentences in that way it's like spiritualizing the whole conversation so this is one interesting thing that we can do whenever feasible try to talk about krishna so chaitanya mahaprabhu's another instruction is yare deko tare kaho krishna upadesh whomever you meet you talk to them about krishna and last but not the least the shell that i told you the tortoise shell into which we have to withdraw ourselves or in the case of the panchatantra story that i told you the tree the safe tree which the monkey jumped into in our case it is devotee association look forward for devotee association whenever possible seek association of devotees participate in krishna conscious activities in the association of devotees and that will keep us very strong it will keep us determined in practicing spirituality in practicing krishna consciousness so let's end today's session with an interesting quote from shila prabhupad prabhupad talks about association in nectar of instruction verse 2 purport association with those engaged in a similar line of business is very conducive to advancement in that business consequently materialistic persons from form various associations and clubs to enhance their endeavors for example in the business world we find such institutions as the stock exchange and chamber of commerce similarly we have established the international society for krishna consciousness to give people an opportunity to associate with those who have not forgotten krishna this spiritual association offered by our iskon movement is increasing day by day many people from different parts of the world are joining the society to awaken their dormant krishna consciousness so prabhupada is saying just like in this world there are different associations formed by people associations and clubs similar interest people they form together an association a club so that their endeavors they in that particular uh, branch or in that particular path will be enhanced in the same way the business of a spiritually minded person is to seek out association of spiritually minded individuals and prabhupad says prabhupad has formed this iskon international society for krishna consciousness to give an opportunity for those spiritual seeking souls to come in the association of devotees and by the association of devotees one can make rapid progress in spiritual life without such association practicing spiritual life is not possible so that's why it is said sadhu sangha sadhu sangha sarva shastra kahe lava matra sadhu sangha sarva siddhi hoy just by associating with devotees one can attain all perfection so with that we come to the end of today's session and now let us chant three times hare krishna mantra before we close the session if you have any questions and comments please whatsapp me personally first we'll chant the panchatatva mantra shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. so request all of you to please give your valuable feedback on today's session in this link bit.ly/tdfeedback 
I think we have two more minutes. If anybody wants to ask a question quickly in less than 30 seconds, or if you want to say something, you can do so now. Okay, so just to recapitulate whatever we discussed today, first and the foremost, avoiding the association of materialistic people means not to closely interact with them, not to closely associate with them. But during our daily activities, um, it's not totally possible to avoid such association. Uh, so, therefore, we have to follow certain things. Like, first one I said, use the principle as much as required only as much as required i interact for that particular purpose secondly the tortoise example set limits how much to interact with whom that we need to set limits because it's going to affect our consciousness isn't it and then uh, what is the third one we discussed uh, can we go back to the slides if possible those last five slides Yes, yeah, this one. So you have to maintain good sadhana. Next one, maintain good sadhana so that we have good consciousness. So, with good consciousness, uh, we can keep ourselves unaffected by material association. And this is an interesting thing. Whenever you talk to somebody in your office, in your workplace, or anywhere, uh, at least add one or two sentences that you heard from the Bhagavad Gita so that you spiritualize your conversation. And always look forward for devotee association eagerly. So we saw the pitfalls. We saw the example of Bharat Maharaj and Ajamila. From them we learn that we should not get into 